Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting lambda using SPSS. Lambda is a measure of association that ranges from 0 to 1, and it's used with two variables measured at the nominal level. A lambda value of 0 indicates no association, and a value of 1 indicates a perfect association between the variables. Lambda returns both symmetric and asymmetric output, so we can use it with two variables. When we have a hypothesis about which variable is the independent variable and which variable is the dependent variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have a substance use variable. It has two levels, no substance use and substance use. And then I have a treatment variable, and this variable has three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and family counseling. So let's assume that these data are drawn from a mental health agency, and we have clients coming into the agency that are seeking help for disorders that are related to substance use or are not related to substance use. And then we have the treatment variable. And let's say that this mental health clinic offers three modalities, individual counseling, group counseling, and family counseling. And we want to see if there's an association between clients that are not seeking help for a substance use disorder and those that are. We want to see if one group tends to pick individual, group, or family more so than the other group. So a possible hypothesis in the situation would be, let's say that from the population that we're sampling, uh, those individuals seeking help for a substance use disorder who are members of the community, perhaps in this particular community that we're sampling from, there are a lot of group counseling services available. So perhaps individuals who are seeking treatment for substance use disorders in this community have been exposed to more group counseling and therefore we hypothesize would be more comfortable with group counseling and more likely to select the group counseling modality than individuals who are not seeking help for a substance use disorder. So that allows us to establish the independent and dependent variable. So in this scenario, we would be assuming that substance use is the independent variable, meaning whether a client is seeking help for a substance use disorder or not. Right? That's the independent variable. And the treatment that they select is a dependent variable. So when we calculate lambda, we want to make sure to interpret the correct row so that we have treatment as the dependent variable. So in order to see the results for lambda, we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross Tabs. This is what the dialog looks like by default. We are assuming that substance use is the independent variable, so we're going to put that in the row. And the treatment is a dependent variable. We'll put that in the column. We'll go to statistics here on the top right, and you can see I have cross tabs statistics, and we're going to look under nominal because both of these variables are nominal variables, and we're going to select lambda, and then click continue, and then click OK. So our first table is the case processing summary. We can see we have 60 observations, no missing values. And then we want to take a look at the substance use times treatment modality cross tabulation. So here on the left, we have uh, substance use, the variable, and the two levels, no substance use and substance use. And then for treatment modality, this is the column, we have three levels, individual, group, and family. And we can see for the family treatment modality, uh, there's not much difference between the no substance use and substance use levels. Two for no substance use and three for substance use. 
But for individual versus group, we do see a difference here. We have, or, or a greater difference. We see we have 23, no substance use, that selected individual, but only five selected group. And then for substance use, only six selected individual, but 21 selected group. So just by looking at this cross tabulation, we already would be led to believe that there is an association here and that those seeking help for the substance use disorders seem more likely to select the group modality and those who are seeking help for a disorder not related to substance use are more likely to select individual. And that brings us to the next table, directional measures. So we can see for lambda, uh, there is a symmetric value that's returned, and then there are two other values, substance use as a dependent variable and treatment modality as a dependent variable. And you can see the values are quite different. Both are statistically significant, but here we're looking at the substance use dependent, and now we'd be treating our independent variable as a dependent variable, and that's not what we want to do. We want to look at the treatment modality as a dependent variable. So the value that we wish to interpret here is the treatment modality dependent. So that would have the substance use as the independent variable. And the value of lambda in this case is 0.484. So when interpreting the value of lambda, it's important to recognize that it has a what we refer to as a PRE interpretation. That's proportional reduction in error. So first we want to convert this value into a percent. So 0.484 would be 48.4%. And then we want to think of it in terms of proportional reduction in error. So what this means in this particular case is that if we want to compare having the knowledge of the substance use, meaning whether somebody's in the no substance use or the substance use level, having that knowledge compared to not having that knowledge improves our ability to predict the correct outcome by 48.4%. So knowing the substance use variable values, so having access to that information improves our ability to predict the correct outcome by 48.4%. So another way to look at it is that by having that substance use variable, we can reduce the probability of making an incorrect prediction by 48.4%. So that leaves us with the question of the relationship strength. Now we know that lambda ranges from zero, which is no relationship, to one, which is a perfect relationship. But what are the cutoff values? Well, one way to interpret the value for lambda is to consider what the impact is for your particular application. Meaning if you could reduce the probability of an incorrect prediction by 48.4%, and collecting that information for the substance use variable was fairly easy, would that be worth it? Uh, that's a decision you have to make based on a few different factors. There are several different sets of guidelines for determining the strength of the lambda value. One popular rating, which seems to be fairly useful, is that a value of 0 to 0 0.2 is a weak relationship, represents a weak relationship between the two variables. From 0.2 to 0.4, so a lambda value of 0.2 ranging to 0.4 represents a moderate relationship and a relationship above 0 0.4, 0 0.4 or above, represents a strong relationship between the two variables some guidelines that are less conservative than that and some guidelines that are more conservative than that. 
but it's up to you as the researcher to decide how important the value is for your particular study and for what you're trying to figure out by calculating lambda. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting lambda to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.